Unit Four, Lesson Four A, Exercise Two. A. Armpit. Chin. Eyebrow. Eyelash. Eyelid. Fingernail. Lip. Neck. Nostril. Palm. Scalp. Throat. Thumb. Wrist. B. Chest. Hip. Hip. Stomach. Thigh. Waist. C. Ankle. Calf. Heel. Shin. Sole. Toenail. Lesson A. Exercise five. One. Hi. Are you okay? Yes, but I can't stop now. I've got to watch Adam on TV. Your friend Adam, with fair hair. Yes, he's on Britain's Got Talent tonight. You're joking. What's he doing on a talent show? What can he do? He's dancing. He says it went really well. They recorded the show last night. <laughs> but Adam can't dance. I've seen him. W what do you mean? Oh, he isn't on TV tonight. He was pulling your leg. Really? Do you think so? Yes. Oh, he's always doing that. I really believed him this time. Two. What's Dad doing in the garden? He's been out there for hours. I think he's building something. Building something? What? I'm not sure. But I saw him carrying lots of wood from the car. It was really heavy. He kept dropping it. Did you give him a hand? I tried to, but he said he could manage on his own. He didn't want me around. I think it's all a big secret. I'm going out to have a look. Don't get too close. He's in a really bad mood. Three. I'd better go. It's nearly eight o'clock. Why don't you stay for dinner? Oh, that's very kind of you, but I think I'd better get home. I've got a few things I need to do, and we're having roast dinner. No, no, I really must. Oh, oh, what kind of roast dinner? Chicken? No, roast beef with roast potatoes and Yorkshire pudding. Oh, well, okay. You twisted my arm. I'll stay then. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Four. Are you looking forward to the match? Yes, I am. Who do you think is going to win? Oh, I don't know. It'll be close. They're both really good teams. I reckon Chelsea will win, but only by one goal. Yeah, maybe. Oh, <laughs> come on, make a prediction. <laughs> well, if you really want me to. Yes, I do. I reckon it'll be two-one to Chelsea. What do you think? Well, okay, I'll say two-nil to Liverpool. Really? Do you want to bet on that? I'll buy you dinner if you're right. Okay? Oh, uh, yes. Okay, I suppose so. I'll stick my neck out. Five. So anyway. I was in a cafe with Kirsty last weekend. You know that new cafe in town. Actually, we were sitting at a table outside, and a woman came over to us and said she worked for Face magazine. Really? What did she want? She asked if Kirsty was a model. When Kirsty said no, she asked her if she wanted to be in some photos in the magazine. Wow. Kirsty must have been totally amazed. Actually, no, she wasn't. She didn't bat an eyelid. What? 
She didn't even look excited for a minute. But she said yes, didn't she? She took the woman's mobile number and said she'd think about it. Wow, that's very cool. Maybe that kind of thing happens to her all the time. Six. Hi, Dad. Hey, what's the matter with you? My exams start tomorrow. I'm really worried about them. Why are you worried? You've worked hard, haven't you? I need 75% to get an A in biology. And I need an A to study medicine at university. Isn't biology your best subject? Yes, but what if I can't answer the questions? I'm terrible in exams. I panic. You'll be fine. You need to keep your head. Read the questions slowly and give yourself time to think. And get some sleep tonight. You're right. I know you're right. Thanks, Dad. Lesson B. Exercise 3. When did you start kayak surfing? Ten years ago. I went kayaking a few times with my family. Later, my brother took me to the beach and we went kayaking in the waves. I've been a fan since that day. <laughs> Most people haven't heard of kayak surfing. What is it? It's like surfing, but you're in a kayak, not on a board. The sport has become a lot more popular in the past few years. Have you had much success in the sport? Yes. I've won several medals so far, including the Junior World Championship. When did you win that? In 2009. Lesson C. Exercise 2. A healthy appetite. In Britain, school children usually have lunch at school, and recently the government has encouraged schools to offer healthier food. At the start of the autumn term, John Lambert, the head teacher at Raw Marsh Comprehensive School in Yorkshire, introduced healthier school meals that he says help the children to concentrate better. He also reduced the lunch break from one hour to 30 minutes and banned children from going out to local takeaways during the break. But two mothers, Mrs Critchlow and Mrs Walker, believe that the new rules don't give pupils enough choice or enough time to enjoy their lunch. So two weeks ago, they started passing burgers, fish and chips and fizzy drinks over the school fence. Soon, they were delivering up to 60 food, food orders. Mr Lambert has described the two mothers as unwise and said they were undermining the school and their children's education. He claims there have been improvements in behaviour and learning in the afternoons since the new healthy eating regime was introduced. After a meeting with Mr Lambert, the two mothers have agreed to stop their deliveries while they try to resolve the problem. Speaking before their meeting, Mrs Critchlow argued that the children have the right to choose their food. We are not against healthy eating. It's about the freedom of choice. Lesson C. Exercises 4 and 5. Speaker 1. I reckon it's a good idea trying to get schools to serve healthier food. Some people say it won't make a difference because people don't like it when the government tells them what to do. But look at the smoking law. That really helped to reduce smoking and improve people's health. And there are other examples too. It can work. Speaker 2. Nobody likes the government telling them what to do or what to eat. And sometimes the advice is confusing. You know, it changes from year to year. People say it isn't the government's business to tell us what to eat. Our health is our own business. The thing is, the government has to pay when you get ill and need to go to hospital. And if more and more people need treatment because they're unhealthy, that means raising taxes. So I think the government should try to make people, people eat healthier food and save us all some money. Speaker 3 these politicians think they can control every area of our lives. How we drive, what we eat, where we smoke. I've had enough. If I want to eat chips every day and drive everywhere by car, then that's my decision. 
I can make up my own mind if I want to live a healthy life or not. I'm not stupid, and it's nobody else's business what I do. We've got too many laws already in this country. We don't need a new law telling us we have to eat salad twice a week. Thank you very much. Speaker four. I think it's a joke, frankly. A law about healthy eating. We don't elect politicians so that they can stop us doing what we want. We elect them to run the country. What are they going to do next? Ban fish and chip shops? Stop people from buying chocolate bars? Or pass a law that says fast food restaurants are illegal? They probably would if they could. Meanwhile, crime is going up. Taxes are going up. Speaker five. I don't understand why people are complaining about these new government regulations. I mean, they say things like, "We've got the right to eat whatever we want." Well, sure, go ahead, make yourself fat and unhealthy. But what about your kids? You haven't got the right to make them fat and unhealthy too. What about their rights? Lesson E, Exercise Two. Mind over matter. Firewalking. Walking across burning coals or red-hot stones has a long tradition. It became popular in Europe and the USA in the 1970s, and many people went on training courses to learn the skill. They believed that firewalking was good for their mind and body, and might even give them mystical powers. Actually. The ability to walk over hot coals has more to do with physics than mind over matter. The heat doesn't pass quickly from the coals to the walker's feet, particularly if they keep moving. If you do it properly, there is little risk of injury. In 2002, 30 managers from the KFC fast food chain went on a team-building trip, which included firewalking. Twenty of them had to go to hospital in order to get medical treatment for burnt soles. They used red hot wood instead of coal. Hypnosis. In the 1770s, a doctor called Franz Mesmer started to treat his patients in Paris with a strange new technique. He held their thumbs, pressed their stomachs. And then played music on an instrument made of glass. Mesmer didn't know it, but he was using a form of hypnosis. These days, hypnosis still has medical uses, but most people are familiar with it because of stage hypnotists. These performers ask for volunteers from the audience so that they can hypnotize them. In this state, the volunteers do all kinds of strange and funny things. They eat onions as if they were apples, or they act like animals or giant babies. The hypnotist seems to have control over their minds. Although the main purpose is entertainment, some people find the idea of mind control worrying. The British government even passed a law in 1952 in order to protect the public from irresponsible hypnotists. Most scientists believe stage hypnotism does not involve real mind control. The volunteers are extroverts who want to help the performer to put on a good show. Telekinesis. In the 19th century, scientists became interested in the possibility that some people had the power to move a physical object without touching it. They named this power telekinesis. And over the years, several people have claimed to have it. In 1980, American James Heydrich became famous overnight after appearing on a TV show. Millions watched him as he made the pages of a book turn without touching them. But James Randi, an American magician, was skeptical. He knows the different tricks people use when they pretend to have psychic powers. Randy appeared on a live TV show with Heydrich in order to test his claims. He put small pieces of polystyrene around a book, and then challenged Heydrich to turn the pages using telekinesis without moving the polystyrene. 
Heydrich couldn't do it. Later, Heydrich publicly admitted that he had never had special powers. So how did the pages move? Simple. He blew them. But he had practised blowing hard without moving his lips or chest. End of CD1 Lesson F. Exercise 1 Good morning. What can I do for you? Well, I've got a problem with my eye. Oh, yes. I can see that. When did it start? Uh, three or four days ago. I see. Is it painful? Yes, it's very sore. It hurts when I blink. Let me have a look at it. Yes, the eyelid is very swollen. Have you put any drops in it? Yes, I got some eye drops from the chemists, but they didn't do anything. I think you need antibiotics. You've got an eye infection. Are you allergic to penicillin? No, I'm not. I've taken it before. OK. I'm going to prescribe some eye drops as well. Good. Thank you. Have you had any other symptoms? Uh, no, I haven't. I've been feeling fine. Good. Now, I think you should come back next week. I want to make sure it's getting better. And you must call immediately if it gets worse. Lesson F. Exercise 3. 1. Hello, come in. What brings you here today? I'm not very well. I see. What are your symptoms exactly? I feel hot and shivery. Uh-huh. Uh, let me take your temperature. Hmm. Yes, you've got a temperature. It's quite high. Have you got a headache? Yes, I have. Um, what about a stiff neck? No, my neck's fine. Hmm. Have you noticed a rash anywhere on your skin? No, I don't think so. Um, well, I'm sure it's just a normal virus. You need to drink lots of water. If I were you, I wouldn't worry about food until you're better. Just eat when you're hungry. OK, so I don't need any medicine? No, just rest. And, as I say, plenty of water. Thanks, Doctor. Two. Come in. Hello. How can I help you? Well, I had an accident yesterday. I fell out of a tree. Oh, really? How far did you fall? Probably two metres, but I banged my head. Right. And have you been having any symptoms? I've had a bad headache all day today, and I'm feeling a bit sick too. Hmm. I think you've got concussion. How did you get here? On my bike. Ah, uh, I don't think you should cycle home. Oh. Um, can somebody pick you up? Yes, my dad. Is it serious? Probably not, but if your symptoms get worse, call the hospital. It's very important to be careful about head injuries. OK. Thanks for your help. You're welcome. Three. Hello, come in. How can I help? I've got an upset stomach. Mm -hmm. How long have you had it? Just a couple of days. Any other symptoms? Headache? Fever? No, no, uh, just my stomach. Uh, I feel sick, too. Uh, can you remember eating anything unusual? Anything that tasted bad? Uh, I had some chicken at my uncle's house at a barbecue. It wasn't really cooked. It was still pink in the middle. But I had to eat it. Ah, well, that's probably what caused it. It's very important to cook meat properly. Mm. Can you give me anything to make me feel better? Oh, I don't think you need to take anything. Drink plenty of water. Don't worry about eating anything yet. Oh, OK. Thanks. And you must take extra care washing your hands. OK, I'll do that. Um, anything else I can help you with? Yes. Is there a toilet here? Oh, uh, yes. First door on your right. Thanks. Bye. 
Four. Good morning. How can I help you? Oh, hello, Doctor. I'm feeling really bad. I've got an upset stomach. Oh dear. I'm sorry to hear that. Sit down, and I'll take a look at you. It started about a week ago. I had a really bad headache for two days. Mhm.、Mm、Did you take anything for it? Yes, just ordinary painkillers. Hmm.、Uh, let me take your temperature. Hmm. Thirty-eight point nine. Yes, you've got a temperature. Really? Is it very high? Don't worry. It's just a virus. I'm sure. Have you had any other symptoms? No, not really. The best thing would be to stay at home for a few days. But I'm really busy at work. Can't you just give me some antibiotics? No, you don't need antibiotics. Try to rest as much as possible. You'll get better soon. Okay. Thanks, doctor. Lesson F, Exercise Five. I really think you should. I don't think you should. If I were you, I would. If I were you, I wouldn't. Try not to. In your position, I would. In your position, I wouldn't. You need to. It's very important not to. You must. You mustn't. The best thing would be to. You really ought to. It would be a good idea to. Skill up one to four, exercises five and six. Hi, you must be Anna Poruchnik. Yes, I am. Nice to meet you. My name is Julian Lloyd. I'm the human resources manager here. Thanks for coming. My pleasure. Now I've got your application form here. You're a student, aren't you? That's right. I'm studying economics at the university.、Mm, and how is that going? Fine. Well, it's difficult, but I'm enjoying it. <laughs> you enjoy a challenge, do you? Yes, I do. Good. And you're looking for some part-time work. Yes, I am. I've just moved to a new flat, and the rent is a lot higher. Ah, I understand. So, why did you apply for this job in particular? Well, I looked at quite a lot of job adverts, and this one just seems right for me. I worked at a holiday camp last year, last year, so I've got a lot of experience of dealing with the public, and I'm very enthusiastic.、Uh -huh. And you mention languages on your application form, don't you?、Uh, ah, du sprichst Deutsch. Yeah, mein Deutsch is nicht perfekt, aber ziemlich gut.、Mm, yes.、Uh, any other languages? Polish, of course. You're from Poland, aren't you? Yes, I am. And I speak a bit of Russian too. Good. Well, do you have any questions? Yes. What exactly are the hours? The advert just says morning or afternoon. Oh, well, the morning hours are nine o'clock until midday. The afternoon hours are four till seven. So three hours. The advert says two hours. Does it? Oh dear, that's a mistake. Uh, yes, the shifts are three hours. Is that a problem for you? No, it's better. Oh, good. And which would you prefer, morning or afternoon? Afternoon is better for me. I have classes at the university in the mornings. Great. Well, I'm very happy with your application. When can you start? Next Monday? Sure. Great. I'll send you a confirmation letter in the post. Hello, Julian Lloyd's office. Oh, hello. Could I speak to Julian Lloyd, please? Well, I'm afraid he's in a meeting. 
Can I take a message? Yes, uh, it's Anna Porucznik here. It's my first day at work today, but I can't come in. I've got a temperature and a sore throat. I feel terrible. Oh, poor you. Yes, I can tell, Julian. I hope you get better soon. Thanks. Bye. Unit 5. Lesson 5A. Exercise 2. Are you a computer geek? 1. Have you ever A. Downloaded and listened to a podcast B. Uploaded photos to a social networking site C. Located a Wi-Fi hotspot D. Installed an app on your phone E. Joined a file-sharing network F. Published a blog G. Subscribed to a YouTube Tube channel H. Used a webcam to video chat I. Used autocomplete to fill in forms on web pages. 2. Explain these sentences in your own words. A. Please contact the webmaster if any of the links on this page are broken. B. Your username and password are case sensitive. C. Click on the red button to bookmark this web page. 3. Can you name three different A. Companies that make desktop computers B. Things you could connect to USB port of a computer C. Means of data storage D. Internet browsers.